the slow walk No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna I know a lot of you out there are trying to deal with lactic acid buildup and trying to answer this question of how to deal with lactic acid buildup in your training. And obviously it's one of the, uh, a common question that I've asked myself over the years, trying to learn what is the proper way to, to teach my body to be able to sustain race pace for longer periods of time or higher aggressive anaerobic efforts for a longer period of time. And, and not being able to, and, and being able to be more efficient when it comes to uh, sustaining race pace and there's no real easy answer and my best recommendation is just your proper training and being consistent with your training making sure that if you're if you're planning to run fast over whatever particular distance you're aiming for you're gonna have to stress the energy systems of your body and you're gonna have to get outside of your comfort zone there's no easy answer to this question if you're training sufficiently, throughout the week at a higher intensity than you're planning on racing at or or equal to your race pace, you're going to have a greater chance of being much more economical when it comes to racing and running and running at faster paces. Remember, it takes about three weeks to a month for your body to adapt to any stress load you're placing on it. So right now, if you're doing, say, a three-mile tempo run at 630 mile pace on the on the track or on the roads, to get to a point where you can handle that lactic acid buildup more effectively, stay consistent with that workout. Continue to do that workout for three weeks to a month. And I promise you, 630 mile pace and that, that lactic acid buildup and that pain that you're dealing with right now is going to be much more easy for you a month from now. So in, in, you know, in terms of how to deal with lactic acid buildup, we, we just have to be patient with our, our training. We have to make sure that we're, we're running... A higher, we're spending enough time on our feet, not only building our endurance, but also building that strength and stamina that we need in order to handle higher amounts of lactic acid buildup and being able to effectively clear that. You know, that's the main objective with, you know, training at fast paces or even training for long periods of time for several hours if you're doing a long runs, building that endurance, building that stamina and improving the body's lactate tolerance. You're just simply not going to be able to to deal with lactic acid more effectively um, if all you're doing, if the majority of your training is done, is conducted at uh, mainly an aerobic effort. Of course, you're going to be very strong endurance-wise. You're going to burn fat. You're going to very, you're going to be very fit. But there's a difference between running slow and running fast. And the faster we run, the more oxygen is required. Uh, the more inflammation that's built up after these workouts. Uh, that's why I always stress the importance of your recovery, making sure that you're studying what do the world's best runners do. You know, I, I mentioned uh, the Fit King compression device uh, in the community tab on the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll leave a link below for that device on Amazon. I highly recommend that. Uh, I have that myself. Uh, my nephew Brock, who's also um, training at a very high level, just recently broke 15 minutes for 5,000 meters running 14.55. He uses it. So these little things, recovery, will help you improve your ability to handle higher amounts of lactic acid as long as you're, as you're, you're really focusing on your, your hard training, but also recovery. What are you doing after you do the workout? What are you doing the hours after you get off that track or after you do that road workout? Are you hydrating well? Are you resting? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you paying attention to mental rehearsal, mental training, not just physical training, to also improve the body's lactate tolerance and to be able to handle higher amounts of lactic acid? You also have to visualize yourself running at a high level, visualizing yourself, you know, passing people, running at the types of paces that you're dreaming about. It, it, it's not just the physical workouts that we do that helps us make major jumps in our physical racing okay the world's top runners some of the top runners i've trained with world-class runners way faster than i ever ran were very focused on both mental as well as physical training if you look at the other endurance athletes like uh skiers they are you can see them closing their eyes and always visualize visualizing themselves moving prior to their starting of their races if you watch some of the olympics and in some of their races you i've seen it numerous times where you see these athletes were either on the slalom jump 
um, or on the ski jump where they'll they'll sit there and they'll just sit them you know m- the, the movements they'll see you'll see them making movements visualizing themselves moving through the race and you have to sometimes you have to spend 10 to 15 minutes daily doing that as well um, how to handle lactic acid buildup it's really about your, your pain tolerance and the and you don't get faster in racing you don't improve your your body's pain tolerance unless you're getting outside of your comfort zone efficiently and effectively and doing that enough throughout the week okay the world's top runners are running around 40 percent of their weekly volume at or below anaerobic threshold effort okay and that's directly from dr joe vigil one of the world's top distance running coaches uh, a world-renowned exercise physiologist and a mentor of mine uh, over the years as well. He was a very good uh, friend of Joe, Jack Hazen, who was my collegiate coach. And because of that, uh, we at Malone University were very fortunate to, to spend a lot of time around Dr. Joe Vigil. Um, I'll leave the link to Dr. Vigil's Vigilosophy uh, presentation below this video as well. So I highly recommend you take the time to watch that from start to finish as well. Uh, he also touches on a lot of uh, specific strategies and tactics you can use uh, in order to deal with lactic acid better. Okay, if you're again, if you're running the majority of your weekly volume at an aerobic effort, say 95%, 5% is aerobic, you're going to have a hard time dealing with lactic acid more effectively. Okay, you have to make sure you're doing those hill repetitions. You're you're getting on to the track. You're doing a VO2 max workout once per week. You're doing, uh, you're extending the duration you're spending at your anaerobic threshold. Okay, right now, again, if you were running, say, at 630 mile pace, just for example, for three miles, that's going to be very hard. You're going to have a very hard dealing with that, that lactic acid buildup in the first three weeks of doing that on a consistent basis. But I promise you, in three weeks to a month, you're going to, it's going to be more toward like 550 to five to six minute pace will feel equally as tough as that 630 pace and when you try to go run 630 pace it's going to feel like a joke to you it's not going to feel as is difficult anymore because again you've been consistent with your training you've done your aerobic training you've stayed focused on building your endurance running easy recovery focusing on the the hours after the workout uh working on compression working if you have a compression device like the fit king uh icing uh rest hydration, proper nutrition, all the fundamentals that the world's top runners really focus on, okay? These runners that are running at a high level, this is what we do, okay? We're we're not just focused on how to improve lactic acid, uh, how to improve that ability to clear it, but also we focus on the other fundamentals, the other little details after the workout's completed so that we can continue to improve over a long enough period of time, and that's the way to do it, okay? You can't just you can't just train hard all the time either, okay? There's a point where there is a point of diminished return where you, will, you won't continue to see great results if you're not paying attention to slowing down on those recovery days. So it's also important, if you wanna improve your body's ability to clear lactic acid, you also have to pay attention to slowing down and taking that same discipline you have on your hard days and imply, apply that to your easy days and recover. Some of the top world-class runners I've run with over the years will jog on their easy days. So it's easy for a reason. Slow down, okay? Promise you, you'll be able to really continue to push your body hard on those anaerobic days if you've allowed your time, allowed sufficient time for your body to uh, react to those workouts and, and more importantly, to adapt to the workouts that you've been doing. So I think in, in, in order to improve uh, your, your lactate tolerance and your ability to clear lactic acid more efficiently, you, you, like I mentioned in, in past videos, you have to run longer, not only longer, but faster long runs, okay? Don't get in the habit of running easy every weekend, okay? You will build endurance by doing that. You'll burn fat very efficiently, but you have to start spending some time during, during those long runs. Say it's a 20-mile long run. Spend a few miles or a few kilometers running at 5K to 10K race pace if you're training for a marathon, Okay, if you're training for a 5K or a 10K, spend some time running at one mile to 3K race pace throughout that long run. And then again, sprinkle in some very easy relaxed miles or kilometers, some moderate, uh, maybe a running at anaerobic threshold effort for some miles or kilometers throughout that long run. Okay, fartlek workouts are also great for improving lactate t- uh, tolerance and improving your ability to clear lactic acid. 
uh, more effectively. Because again, you're sprinting for a certain amount, it might be like 30 second or 30 times 30 second reps running at sprint paces with two minutes of recovery or 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So these are just some things I want you thinking about in, in order to deal with lactic acid more uh, efficiently as you train and as you get fitter. It's gonna be hard in the early part of your buildup, but I promise you, if you stay consistent over a long buildup, 16 to 24 weeks, your ability to handle lactic acid buildup is gonna be much more improved because you stayed consistent, because you didn't lose enthusiasm for what you're doing, and you were relentless in your training. So I hope this video is helpful for all of you. Uh, please like and share these videos. I really appreciate that. It helps more athletes around the world to see these videos and obviously the YouTube uh, algorithm. Uh, there are a lot of resources on RunDreamAchieve.com as well as below these videos as well. So definitely check those out. And again, I'll leave the link for Dr. Joe Vigil's Vigil Philosophy presentation. I uh, highly recommend that. And also the link to the Fit King compression device that I highly recommend you you get to help you recover from these workouts you're doing. So I wish you guys and gals all the best and I'll talk to you all in the next video.